Now again, I'd like to thank all who have come this afternoon. I trust that God will bless each and every one. I would like to read three short uh, readings from the Word of God. Firstly, in Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, reading the last few words of verse 22 and verse 23. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Acts chapter 16, and we read there at the end of verse 30, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And finally, in Luke's Gospel, in chapter 19, and verse number 5, it says there, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste, and came down, and received him joyfully. And we trust that God will bless the reading of his precious word this afternoon. Now I think the gospel should be a subtle message. And today I hope that I can make it as subtle as I can. Now, I just looked at these three passages as A, B, and C. Firstly, we have all have sinned. That takes on each and every one of us. Then we have in Acts 16, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And then C, we have a little man, Zacchaeus, who suddenly came, came as he was, a sinful maker, came just as he was in a sinful walk, and he came down and received the Lord Jesus Christ as his own and personal saviour. But firstly, in in Romans chapter 3, we have there, for there is no difference. And dear friend, it doesn't matter whether you're standing up here or sitting in the car or at your work or wherever you may be. It says there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That takes in each and every one of us. We're all sinners in the sight of a holy God, born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And if I had a read in Romans 5 and 12, it says, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death has passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And dear friends, sin entered into this world. And way back in Genesis chapter 3, we read about it. It says that, that man, it says in chapter 2, that God breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. And man became a loving soul. And dear friend, we all have a soul within that's going to live the life of God. I say they're going to be in heaven with the redeemed or down in hell with the lost. And dear friend, there's no other place. It's heaven or hell for eternity. And we read in chapter 3 of, of Genesis that, that Eve took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And she gave unto her husband Adam. And he did eat. And sin entered into the world. And as we quoted that verse in Romans 5, that death came into the world through the sin. And dear friends, it affects us all, each and every one. You know, every, every, every day we hear of death entering in, and people get out into eternity. And you know, it's not just for a day or two, it's for, it's for the great and never ending eternity. You know, uh, my wife bought me a wee book last week and I didn't get, I haven't got reading it, but I read the back of it where it gives you a sort of an outline. And it's a book about a young man, I have his name written here, Matthew Arnold. I don't know if any of us have read it or not, I think she got it from Ricky. This young man, Matthew Arnold, he, when he was growing up, there was four sons born 
his parents. And I think Matthew was the third one, but what I can gather from the outline. And the oldest wee boy died when he was six of, of pneumonia. The second wee boy died when he was three of pneumonia. And then there was Matthew. And Matthew grows up and into a young man and gets married. And he's married, a, no, I don't think it's very long, but him and his wife have a wee, a wee baby girl. And the wee baby girl's only three weeks. When Matthew's father gets a phone call that he's been on a motorbike accident. And Matthew was at her down at the We We baby only three weeks old. And he's at her down at the eternity. But you know the good thing for Matthew was he was saved. He knew the Lord Jesus Christ as his own personal savior. He's in heaven today. But you know what struck me? The last words of that book, the last line is these. It says, live your life like you're going to live forever. But we're ready to leave today. I wonder to your friend as we speak to you this afternoon, if this was to be your last day upon earth, if this was to be your last time ever to hear the word of God, dear friend, what are you about? Where will you be for all eternity? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your own personal Savior? Or today do you sit at the harbor here and still in your sins? Are you on the road to hell and the lake of fire for all eternity? Dear friend, you don't have to leave it that way. You can be saved even this, in the sit seat where you sit today. You don't have to go out and speak to anybody. You don't have to be taking your horn or flashing your lights or anything else. You can be simply saved and drive off, and, but, but, but I mean, never know. We would like you to tell us, but, but dear friend, you can be saved in the very seat where you sit this afternoon. But remember the word of God says, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're in the end of in Acts chapter 16. And we're in there. Of, it tells us of Paul and Silas. And Paul and Silas were put into the prison. They were actually preaching the gospel and teaching them and healing people. And they were put into prison. And you know, there's a great earthquake, it says. And the prison doors were open. And everyone's bands were loosed. And you know, the jailer came out thinking that, that the prisoners would have been fled. And Paul and Silas told him to do himself no harm. He says, we're all here. And then it says he came out crying. And he says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And you know what an answer he got. What a plain answer he got. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Dear friend, what can be said there this afternoon? You know, if you were to realize your need is a godly hell deserving sinner and suddenly turn from your sin, repent, and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. His own word tells us, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. You don't have to wait. There's no delay. You can be saved this very afternoon. Just by simply hearing the word of God, repenting, and believing in his only well beloved Son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, whosoever believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Dear friend, that 
Whosoever takes you in, you can be saved today and have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. See for all eternity. Knowing heaven is your eternal home. You know that man? There'd have been some change in the jailer that day. You can just imagine it. He thought his task was impossible. The jail was lying open. Everybody was free to go. And yet they were still all, they were all still there. Not one of them moved. And you know, they were able to point them to the Lord Jesus Christ. And a man reached and saved and fell it for heaven and home. But you know, they ever read of a wee man called Zacchaeus and, and Luke chapter 19. And I love this portion of the word of God. It's a wee man that says he sought to see Jesus. And you know, like, there's not too many today are seeking after the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, they're enjoying the pleasures of the world. They've hardly a thought about their soul. But here's a wee man, and it says he sought to see Jesus. Now he had trouble seeing him because it says he couldn't see for the press. There was, there was a big crowd about him. He couldn't see. Couldn't see over them. And he thought to himself, he would run, run in front of them. And he climbed up into a sycamore tree for to see him. For he was to pass that way. And you know, we read that, that Jesus came to the place. And that's why I've been telling you, dear friend, that you can be saved in the car and the seat where you sit. Jesus came to the place. You don't have to move, dear friend. Jesus came right to where he was. He looked up at him. And he says, the case. He doesn't need to be introduced to him. Dear friend, God knows each and every one of you. He knows the very thoughts of your heart today. And he speaks to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must abide at thy house. You know, Zacchaeus, he had a choice. He could have sat where he was and says, no, I'm all right, I've seen enough. You could be in your car today and says, oh, well, I've heard enough. Then you can drive away. And dear friend, you could be in eternity tomorrow. Any one of us could. But Zacchaeus made a choice that day. It says he made haste. And he came down. And he received them joyfully. You know, I would say, if you could talk to Zacchaeus this afternoon, he would say, I would love to tell you about the day I got saved. When the day I was sitting up the tree and the Lord Jesus came right to where I was. He says, I jumped down and I received them joyfully. I received them as the only personal savior. Name written in the last book of life. See you for eternity. See you for heaven and home. Dear friend, can there be anything better? There's no other option. That's heaven or hell. And if you've got Christ, dear friend, this afternoon, you're going to heaven. You're going to meet the Lord Jesus Christ and be with him for all eternity. Dear friend, I must warn you. If you're without Christ and without God in the world, Ephesians tells us you're without hope. We're into the man in Luke 16. And it says he left up his eyes being in torment. And he wants his five brethren born. Lest they also come into this place of torment. And dear friend, he's still there today. He's still in torment. Tormented forever. 
Dear friend, my wife this afternoon went for God's great salvation. You can be saved this afternoon. Make the wise choice. Repent of your sin. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. And believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says now, shall be saved. We trust that you've always, dear friend, in the ground for God's great salvation. While you still have the time, shall we pray? Our gracious God and loving Heavenly Father and our worthy precious name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, we come to thee at the end of our life, meeting down here at the harbour in Port of Oakland. We pray and thank thee for those who have gathered this afternoon and for those who might be listening on the radio. We pray and ask to remember each and every one. Come in and bless them and if they're not saved as yet, come in and speak to them and convict them of their sin and bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ for great salvation. We pray, Father, that each and every one under the sound of our voice today might release and see it and fill it for heaven and home. Father, remember the need of the gospel up and down the length and breadth of our land. From here to the very far corners of the earth, Father, we pray and ask thy blessing to be upon thy good word and come in and bless and save souls, we pray. And our saviors are our worthy and precious name. Amen. We thank you very much for listening and trust that you'll come back again next week to hear our brother Jonathan Ambrose. Thank you.